Shurabindo Savitri starts with dawn. It was the hour before the gods awake. And it ends with the hope of a dawn and uh, nursed in her bosom a greater dawn. It starts with the dawn of the day on which Satyavan was to die. And uh, what happens in the interval between uh, these two dawns is that uh, in the morning, Satyavan and Savitri leave for the forest. And uh, around noon, Satyavan dies. And then begins the encounter that Savitri has with the god of death. And that, in fact, occupies much of uh, the interval. And uh, in the book, it uh, continues from uh, book 8 onwards and uh, occupies around 4,000 lines. Now, this is uh, something uh, really momentous because overnight, there is something completely unimaginable, something unprecedented, and something which appears totally unreasonable to the reasoning mind happens. And uh, what we see, in fact, uh, is a clash between two forces of God, the God of death and Savitri. Both are forces of God. One has been appointed to cut short man's stay on earth, and another to perpetuate man's stay on earth to make man immortal. And uh, both have a necessity. Man comes to this earth with a purpose and uh, at the same time is born in ignorance. And therefore, uh, he does not often realize the purpose of his existence here. And uh, it is only uh, through some chance, through some accident and uh, through the stimuli provided by pain and suffering that he manages to make a bit of progress during his stay. And uh, if there were no fear of death, probably even that little bit of progress would not take place. And uh, therefore, uh, God has appointed a force in the form of this God of death, who makes sure that uh, at least man makes some progress and his stay does not continue indefinitely. And therefore, we find uh, that uh, God of death it takes pity on human beings who by and large seem to have wasted their life by not making full use of their stay here and he is left with no choice but to disembody them, take their soul back to the other worlds and then these souls have to wait to get embodied once again to make a little further progress if they decide to come back to the earth. On the other hand, uh, Savitri visualizes a world where uh, man will have a level of consciousness much higher than the present, a consciousness that goes beyond the mental and uh, therefore uh, his uh, outer life will be illuminated by the soul, by the pure light of the soul by that light coming from that pure consciousness which he manifests and therefore at that level of consciousness death will no longer be a necessity. So accordingly we find that in this debate that takes place between the two which occupies much of this uh, interval between these two dawns, we find that the god of death is uh, realistically pessimistic whereas uh, Savitri is uh, delightfully optimistic. Both have a point to make and uh, while uh, to the reasoning mind what the god of death speaks appears very reasonable, but then uh, reason cannot really lead to much progress in any sphere. At the most it can lead to small steps which uh, go a little bit beyond where we already are in a very systematic step by step fashion. Giant leaps and breakthroughs come from uh, going beyond reason and uh, giving way to imagination and developing the confidence that uh, if we can imagine it, it can happen. And uh, that is why I think George Bernard Shaw said uh, that all progress in the world, in fact, depends upon the unreasonable man. So we find that uh, here again we have that sort of a clash. Uh, one force of God, the God of death, interested in maintaining the status quo 
because he feels that uh, that is what uh, this earth is like and is always destined to be. Human beings will uh, never be able to make full use of their stay here and uh, they are destined to live a life of ignorance and uh, pain, evil and suffering are a necessity here and so is death so that uh, they have this fear of uh, uh, the so that they have the fear of death and uh, at least they make some use of their stay here and therefore uh, he is convinced that uh, that is how this world will always be and any efforts to try and change it are doomed to failure and he encourages Savitri not to mess with uh, the established order. On the other hand, uh, Savitri has been sent by the divine itself. So she is also a force of the divine and uh, she has been sent in response to the uh, prayers of Ashwapati who pleaded with the divine mother for uh, a radical change in the life on earth, for a radical shift in the level of consciousness of this planet so that uh, evil, suffering and misery will be wiped out forever and death will no longer be a necessity. So being a force of God, Savitri has uh, a mission to accomplish and a plan and she not only has the intention to accomplish her mission, she also has the will and the power necessary and therefore she is very confident that uh, she will be able to do what she is here for and uh, the forces, these two forces therefore come into a clash and uh, ultimately we find that uh, Savitri emerges victorious and uh, the god of death has to flee. Now this is uh, the spectacular progress that takes place between these two dawns. Now Sri Aurobindo has chosen uh, dawn and night as symbols which are very appropriate in this situation because uh, night signifies darkness, ignorance and when it is night it seems as if it is going to be eternal but it is not and uh, the, as the dawn approaches we find that uh, this uh, cloak of darkness as Sri Aurobindo calls it starts falling, there is a breach and uh, the horizon lights up and we find that there is a hope that we'll have day. So while uh, night appears uh, to be permanent, it is only a temporary darkness and uh, this is a symbol to Sri Aurobindo of the temporary ignorance in which man lives. Because uh, man's ignorance is a sort of a darkness of the human mind which uh, refuses to get uh, enlightened by the soul and uh, this darkness of the mind is also as temporary as uh, the night because uh, if we look at the course of evolution, uh, the creatures on this planet have been manifesting more and more of the divine consciousness and uh, if this trend continues and there's no reason to believe that it will not continue, uh, we should expect that the creatures to come after man will uh, manifest this uh, divinity, this uh, supreme consciousness to a still greater extent. And when they do that, the surface instruments like the mind will no longer be dark, they'll be well illuminated by this uh, supreme consciousness and therefore will act in its light and when they do that, then naturally uh, the way we look at uh, the individu individual now will undergo a radical shift instead of uh, looking at the world from the standpoint of uh, division and multiplicity and separation uh, which uh, gives rise to the ego and which in fact is at the root of all human misery and suffering instead of that the this enlightened mind which we which Aurobindo calls the super mind will uh, be able to look at the manifestation, manifestation from the standpoint of oneness and from that angle, from that plane, uh, the whole perspective changes and uh, uh, man will live a life which will be very different and will not uh, require the uh, stimuli, the uh, goading and you know, that uh, type of a hammer as he calls it, uh, which uh, pain and suffering uh, provide to wake up 
the sleeping soul and uh, uh, let that spark of the divine uh, enter the human mind, uh, th that type of stimuli will no longer be necessary. On the other hand, uh, dawn with which the epic begins and ends signifies the victory of uh, light over darkness, the victory of knowledge over ignorance and uh, shows that no matter how um, invincible night appears, how invincible ignorance appears, uh, it is not uh, reasonable to give up hope and uh, we can always expect for yet one more dawn at the end of this uh, darkness. So night and dawn in fact uh, signify two different opposite uh, uh, types of uh, phenomena. Night signifies something which is uh, dark, ignorant and static whereas uh, dawn signifies uh, hope illumination, knowledge and uh, progress because uh, dawn is not static, it progresses from dawn to morning and from morning to noon and so on. So uh, we expect more and more light uh, through the day and uh, uh, this is how dawn brings that hope that uh, yes, night was not going to last forever and it is because of this recurrent cycle of day and night that uh, even during the night we are sure that uh, uh, this will not going to last forever and we shall have uh, the sunlight the next day and uh, true enough at dawn uh, our hopes are full are realized and we find that uh, night is coming to an end. So uh, these symbols are very appropriate for the uh, vision that Sri has which uh, he has brought out through Savitri. So the two dawns, the dawn with which Savitri begins and the dawn with which it ends are not two ordinary dawns. The first one uh, brings hope and the second one brings the realization of that hope, a certitude that things will change and uh, the destiny of man, the destiny of this planet is not uh, doomed to be as the reasonable mind might suppose and uh, that there is a plan, there is a higher force that uh, will ensure that uh, this change does come about. The descent of the divine which Savitri represents uh, will make sure that uh, the things turn around. And therefore, uh, while reading Savitri, the reader also is sure to undergo some type of a change. The very fact that someone starts reading Savitri is itself an expression of divine grace. That is how uh, he somehow comes in contact with this epic and uh, uh, picks up the courage to start reading it. So, takes that initiative. So, in that sense, uh, the very beginning of Savitri, to start reading Savitri itself is a very auspicious moment in the life of a person. And uh, as he goes through these 24,000 lines of mystic poetry and uh, moves from the dawn that signifies hope to the dawn that signifies the realization of that hope and a certitude, he cannot uh, but be moved, touched and uplifted. And uh, therefore, uh, his uh, outlook is uh, now different. He, has, he starts sharing with the epic the hope that uh, things will change. And uh, while it may appear unreasonable looking at the world around, he knows that uh, God is great and wonderful are his ways and uh, things which appear very difficult to us can be very easy for the divine. Things which appear unimaginable can in fact come true and uh, just because something is very difficult does not mean that it will necessarily take very long because uh, the divine has its ways of uh, accomplishing things at remarkable speed in a miraculous manner when uh, things have to happen and uh, that is the type of certitude which uh, Savitri generates the type of optimism and uh, that is the significance of uh, moving from uh, dawn to a greater dawn that uh, Savitri has been able to ensure. So while reading Savitri 
the reader also moves from uh, hope and joy towards the certitude that uh, what he experiences uh, while reading Savitri is something that is uh, not going to be confined uh, to just a few individuals, but uh, is going to envelop the planet in uh, the very near future.